Welcome to the Hans for Life podcast show. This is episode 11. My name is Maya and I'm here with my lovely co-host. Hi, I'm Anja. I'm from Poland. Anja is volunteering at the Hounds uh, for Life Kennels uh, and Te Paranui since a month now, right? Yes, it's been over a month. Yes. Now. And we are so grateful for our volunteers to help us out. What would we do without you guys? Thank you. <laughs> so in this show, um, we are talking all about how greyhounds live in small spaces. But before we go into the show, there's lots to talk about what has happened since the last one, which has been a while. So first of all, we moved out of the lockdown four level into three, and now it's actually one when we are taking this footage. And Anya arrived. Yes, I arrived uh, just after the level four was mm -hmm. lifted, so we were able to travel a little bit across the country, and uh, I was able to relocate uh, from Christchurch and go a little bit up north in search for the sun. And I bet you were happy to leave the whatever you were place you were for five weeks. Yes, actually, <laughs> it's been more than that. So yeah, uh -huh. I was very happy to change. Uh, yes. And we had um, also, as soon as uh, the level four was lifted and we could travel, um, uh, took our trusty uh, minivan um, out of uh, winter sleep and delivered, together with our volunteer Lou, um, two dogs to Christchurch. Uh, it's Swade and Josh and they found lovely homes there. And we took back Bald and Gunnar. Gunnar, meanwhile, is rehomed uh, in the area. So shout out to Gunnar and his new owners. And uh, Bolt, Bolt actually was our very first foster dog that we ever had. The first dog who came to uh, Hounds for Life uh, and he was staying with us. We call that a foster failure <laughs> because we loved him so much. He was young, he was unraised, he was not even two years old, a puppy really. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the former long-term volunteer uh, took, took him uh, with her when she moved, um, but uh, now she, she brought him back. Uh, after two years and now he's back and uh, kind of our resident dog. Yes, <laughs> yes. We actually love uh, having Bolt at the Paranui because he feels so comfortable being in the house and we can trust him that he's not going to pull anything out of rubbish in the kitchen. And, <laughs> uh, he can go around the property with us when we are doing our daily tasks and we know we can trust him. Uh, do you have grads in Poland? Well, actually, I never really had any um, connection with Greyhounds in Poland, or I haven't heard of them. Um, but my first time I, I uh, came across a Greyhound was in Australia, when I worked as a volunteer with a family. And they said they adopted a Greyhound, and that was a new concept for me. And I must say, as a, a, a newcomer to this idea, I was uh, very pleasantly surprised at how natural and how gentle they are and how affectionate they are as well. So, um, yeah, I think greyhounds are really, really great. Meanwhile, we have rehomed Lily and Gunnar in the area uh, where we live. So thank you to the new owners um, and uh, giving them our dogs a lovely home. And we have at the moment at our kennels available for adoption, Rocket, who is featured in this episode by Anya, and Trev, Trevor. And he's actually lovely and he's cat trainable, which we don't have very often. The Hounds for Life podcast show is all about edutaining and raising awareness for the retired ex-racing greyhounds as a companion in their retirement. It is edutainment, that's a new word, <laughs> educating <laughs> and entertainment Yes. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time. And um, we are really dedicated to bring out the world what wonderful, wonderful companion and pets these lovely dogs in where they retire very early in their life and they have a full dog life in, in, ahead of them to bring much joy uh, to a, a person or, or a family. So thank you so much for <clears throat> uh, liking, subscribing and uh, watching uh, the podcast show. We really depend on your feedback. Um, to make uh, make it worth producing. It's quite a bit of work and it's all a labor of love like the whole Hounds for Life project is um, a labor of love and we couldn't do it without the volunteers and private funding. So um, thank you community for supporting it by subscribing to the channel. Uh, 
Um, we also love to have your comments and we love to read them out to you and talk a little bit about them. So let's start with the first comment who's actually inspired us to do this show, episode 11, Living with Grants in Small Spaces. And as always, I have to reveal my age, I need my glasses for that. <laughs> So this comment from uh, Sir Lance Goodthrust, I wonder whether that's his real name, <laughs> it's a lovely <laughs> name anyhow, is um, on uh, the uh, training segment with Rachel, which has hit already 15,000 views. And uh, he's commenting, such beautiful dogs, never considered a greyhound before. I was actually looking at dog training in general when I stumbled across your channel. Lovely! <laughs> would be interested to see how they would go living in apartment bracket. I don't have a backyard. I do have a park nearby. So, Sir, <laughs> Sir Lance, Lance good for us. You have inspired us with your question to do the whole show. The whole show is now about uh, greyhounds living in small spaces. And you might not know that, but greyhounds have been rated to be the best dogs for living in small spaces, apartments and city living from all races, from all breeds. So um, un unlike common um, opinion, mm -hmm. um, the they greyhound don't need is... much space. <laughs> yeah, they don't do yeah. They are ideal. So congratulations, you will have probably your first greyhound soon. <laughs> Another comment from uh, our uh, watchers, right, subscribers, is um, adorable opening, hoping to adopt my own greyhound soon. And I agree, I actually loved the intro to the show when I first watched it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that comment is, uh, I, I signed my name under that. <laughs> So, what else do we have? A hilarious video has been shared uh, from Bjorn Peters. Greyhounds don't jump? Question mark. Just watch the first second of this vid and you can find the video on the uh, how to prepare for a home, uh, home check um, uh, a video on our channel. So it's linked there. It's hilarious. Just have a, have a look there. You will laugh your socks off. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have... Anya, you want to read that? Great info, especially the part about pouring water over the spine. Thank you. And um, this was the episode on how to cool down the greyhound on a hot day. So thank you. And one last comment would be that um, about uh, Cinnamon the Greyhound, Adopt Me, from Kathleen. Um, how about some info in your vlog to find out how to adopt, where to adopt and perhaps the phone number to call. So that's a good question. Thank you for commenting. Um, we are based in New Zealand and if you are also based in New Zealand, please just send us an email which is on our YouTube channel and we would love to get back to you and help you out. If you are living somewhere else outside of New Zealand, there are um, rehoming ag agencies. Um, if there is a, ray, a gray, greyhound racing going on in your country. So please check out just the um, Google, to Google it or send us an email and we try to move you along in the right direction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And do you remember we uh, read out a comment about Jenny in the last episode? She was so keen uh, on having a grant and she had so long to wait. She's in Australia and they have a long waiting list for prospective owners. And mind you, we find ourselves in almost the same situation now. Uh, grants are in high demand. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and uh, so we sometimes struggle to have um, a dog for uh, for uh, in, in prospect new owners. So that's a good problem to have. Um, now she finally got her greyhound and it's Giselle. <laughs> She's adorable. And um, Jenny sent us some pictures which you can see here. Thank you Jenny for that. So before we go on the show, as always, we have to uh, say please, please, please subscribe <laughs> when you enjoy the show. Uh, put your thumbs up, um, put the notification on to never miss an episode and comment. So we take your comments, we read them all and they inspire us uh, for content. So we are very grateful if you do that and interact with us in this way. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> So let's go into the show. This is episode 11 and the title is... 
Aviv, an apartment living with greyhounds. Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. Upcoming now is our owner's interview with Sophie and Alex and their greyhound Edith, or how they call her, Lady Edith. <laughs> We were in Christchurch and had the chance to visit Alex and Edith in the Last Word bar, which they own. And Edith is going to work there every day. And it was just adorable to see her hanging out there. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie, um, Alex's wife, um, was not there. She was in Nelson. Um, and because uh, we were also delivering by the end of the week a dog um, to Nelson, for the, to their forever home, I took the chance and have had an interview with her as well. So this is why you don't see them together. Um, but they have uh, much to say about how they are, um, how how it was when they brought Lady Edith home mm -hmm. into their small apartment in Christchurch. Hi, my name is Sophie. My husband Alex and I live with our greyhound Edith in Christchurch. Edith is seven years old. We've had her for two and a half years. And when we got her from Night Rave, we were living in quite a small apartment in Christchurch. Um, we didn't have any direct access to like fenced outdoor area. So it did mean that initially we had to first teach her how to go up and down stairs. Um, my husband Alex will talk a little bit more about that. And um, it also means that we had to create a really scheduled routine around her kind of toilet times and how we would maneuver that um, because it wasn't an option to just open the door and let her out. One of us had to be with her at all times and she had to be on the lead um, for quite a long time. Uh, but yeah, she she coped absolutely fine. She really, after the first week, I'd say, settled in really nicely at our house, um, discovered that it was her space, got comfortable everywhere, learned that uh, you know there were many soft surfaces she could lay on. And yeah, just was a really dreamy dog. Really special for me too because she's the first dog that I've ever owned and um, yeah had had some ups and downs but absolutely wouldn't trade it for the world um, obviously rehoming a greyhound is I think a really wonderful thing to be able to do to give them you know a whole new opportunity in their retirement uh, but also you know it means that you kind of get to skip that puppy stage as well um, she loves to be with us um, she goes to work with my husband pretty much every day um, which she adores but if we have a need to you know leave her at home for a day by herself while we're working or or if something else comes up, she actually copes absolutely fine. And um, we're really fortunate that uh, when we choose to take a break, we often will come north to Nelson and stay with my parents. They have a little attached apartment to their house. So we can bring Edith up here and she can just stay in that little attached apartment. Um, and yeah, we have a wonderful time. So although in Christchurch, we have subsequently moved into a standalone house that has a fully fenced section, when we take our little vacations up to Nelson and stay in the apartment connected at my parents' property, it's not fenced and it doesn't have a big yard. So we're kind of reverting back to what things were like in that first year and a half with her. If we go back to, you know, going to be on the lead. Somebody's going to be with her all the time. Um, definitely took her the first few visits before she could kind of figure out where it was okay to pee and poop because we've trained her that she has to be on grass. And they lived down a driveway and there wasn't a lot of access to grass. So she definitely struggled a little bit at first because she wants to be a good girl. <laughs> and that was a little bit tricky. Um, but yeah, she loves it. I really think that if we were to stay there for more than a week, she'd really, really get into a good routine. Um, all the visits we've had with her up there have been less than a week. So she develops some good habits, but doesn't have enough time to practice. 
Uh, but yeah, it's really, really comfortable being in a small space with her. We're really fortunate that my husband and I own a business. And so Edith does spend most days with him. She's able to go to work with him. She takes it very seriously. She really likes to be included and she just adores him. So she knows that when he's putting his shoes on, it's time for her to get ready and go to the front door and wait. And yeah, she gets really excited. She loves going in the car or hopping in his truck with him. Um, yeah, she just wants to be included. Uh, which is really wonderful. Alex can tell you a little bit more about that now. Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I am Edith's dad and we live in Christchurch. Uh, we own the Last Word Bar on lovely New Regent Street and Edith comes to work with me uh, almost every day. Uh, we'd never had a greyhound before but part of the reason that we were so keen to was that I, uh, we lived in an apartment and that we wanted a dog and wanted to adopt a dog or rescue a dog. Uh, but I also drive a, a Land Rover and I hated the idea of having a dog that we had to lift up to get in and out. Uh, so this was uh, a real dog in my eyes um, who could do everything a normal dog would do but also fit into our lifestyle really well in terms of coming to work and coming out with me all the time. Uh, our routine is pretty much that she gets incredibly excited uh, to come to work every day and gets very upset if she doesn't get to ride in the car with me. Uh, normally when we go out for a walk each day, uh, she'll circle my car because she wants to go somewhere in there as well or somewhere a bit further afield. Uh, when we got her, uh, we lived in a very, very small two bedroom apartment and one of the bedrooms was um, an office. Uh, which was her, her safe space to begin with. Um, we lived up a flight of stairs. She had never ever used stairs before and they had a, they had a, a see-through tread and so she was pretty scared of them. And uh, so for the first maybe five or six days, every time we went in or out, uh, I had to carry her up the stairs and down the stairs etc. Uh, eventually she got the hang of down the stairs pretty quickly but up the stairs she had to be carried every single time. Because my work schedule is quite long uh, and my wife's is uh, kind of a normal business day it meant that Edith would get up uh, with her in the morning and the two of them would go for a walk and that's when she'd do her toileting and then she'd come back and have breakfast uh, and then about an hour later she'd get up and come to work with me. Uh, we're in a very privileged situation here that in Christchurch there's so much green space in the CBD and lots of river space so she gets to walk along there uh, every day. Uh, at night um, we got into a routine of Edith would come out for a walk with me sometime after midnight, normally around 1.30 in the morning uh, when I'd get home from work and uh, that became her favorite time of day because there was no traffic on the road and she was having trouble adjusting to, to some urban noise the first month or two. Uh, she, we were told with a greyhound that we were never allowed to kind of keep her or have her off lead in an urban environment and that she would chase cats and that uh, basically we had to be very, very careful of having her uh, on lead all the time. Uh, but that wasn't really our style and so those hours after after midnight when it was very very quiet was an excellent time to train her to be off lead so our routine was after she would um, go to pee at the end of the night she would uh, on our way home we'd slowly start unclipping the lead and she got to know where home is uh, and now we always have her lead with her obviously uh, but she almost never ever uses it um, apart from an incredibly busy road if we're walking somewhere. But around here she, she has free reign of the place and she's, she's just wonderful. So when we got, uh, first got Edith she was incredibly timid. Um, I think she had some, some pretty high needs. Even now she's, she's pretty nervous around new people. Uh, but for the first few days we had a bed set up in the quietest, darkest part of the house. And she was scared of most things and would shake all the time. And we got through that by I would go and lie down next to her and sleep with her for a couple of hours. And then eventually she got used to it. And then that grew to she had a bed on the floor in our bedroom. 
and gradually she wanted to be near us but not too close and then when I first she was used to being picked up because she had to be picked up going up and down the stairs for the first week or so and the first time I put her on the bed it was like a revelation to her um, and then she eventually got the hang of the stairs quite quickly she decided that she was actually a big girl and could handle stairs quite easily uh, she never really spent a lot of time outside on a balcony at the house at the at the apartment uh, however she would she would take turns following the sun between uh, my office the bed in the bedroom her bed in the bedroom and then in the middle of the couch as well uh, our favorite thing to do as a family would be to uh, for Sophie and I to have a, an end of the couch each with with Edie in between us and it was it was a nice place to to, to spend some time. Uh, the revelation with Edith was that uh, even though she's she's not massive by a greyhound standards but by a normal dog she's quite tall lots of legs like all greyhounds uh, she's around about 30 kilos uh, but she just fit in fairly seamlessly with with our apartment living and was incredibly happy. Uh, she really uh, greyhounds can really live anywhere you want and she enjoyed every moment and really the only thing that she cares about is as long as she's with us. Uh, we have a, a very small space that we have a, a studio in uh, in Nelson as well and she spends all of her time in there very very happily whenever we're up there. Um, now that we're in a bigger space she loves that as well uh, when we're out in the middle of nowhere running around on a farm or in a big reserve out tramping she loves that also. So really completely adaptable and loves anywhere you are as long as you have that bond. Thank you very much for having Edith and I on the Hounds for Life show and we wish you all the best with your greyhound journey. That was really nice to see a dog actually going to work with the owner um, because you don't normally see dogs hanging around in spaces like that so and greyhounds are really gentle and I think uh, it's really nice to, to see. Uh, and now we're going to discover um, 10 reasons why greyhounds love to live in small places.
So one challenge when you bring a new greyhound home is probably stairs because uh, greyhounds don't use to climb upstairs. Uh, in our next segment uh, we are teaching you how to train your new greyhound to master your stairs. So now you got a new greyhound, um, a retired X-Racing greyhound at home and you're very excited to show him everything at home and you are getting out of the car to your house where you probably have some steps uh, and stairs in front of it and you find your grand is freezing and wouldn't move <laughs> so what are we doing about that that's quite disappointing but you have to be aware that the grand is not taught to master stairs throughout his racing career because uh, your greyhound, as being a very precious athlete, has been carried around everywhere, so he can or she cannot hurt themselves. So, although we here at Hounds for Life are teaching our greyhounds to master stairs, and I suppose most of the uh, foster homes and uh, rehoming agencies would do the same, Coming to your house is a whole another um, game for the Greyhound because there would be stairs they aren't used to. So in this segment, uh, how to segment, we are showing you what we do to teach our foster dogs to master the stairs so they are a lot more confident when they come to your home. It is not the only way to teach your Greyhound. There are other ways, obviously, but these are the methods that works for us and we are very happy to share with you and give you some ideas um, how you can set up the training for your Greyhound. So this uh, is my, the situation that you are facing when you bring your Greyhound home. Either up or down the stairs, the Greyhound might just stay there and freeze. Put all four brakes in what to do. And now you try to persuade him. Obviously, that's the first uh, idea. But that's normally not working with greyhounds. They are quite um, good at not moving when they don't know what to do. So they will just stay there and freeze. You could give him a little tuck. The tuck is not to drag your greyhound along. It's just to get him out of balance and give him direction. You release it immediately once he moves forward. So don't uh, keep on dragging him. Just a little tuck. That might work, but it might not work with all greyhounds. The best uh, way to train your greyhound to use stairs is uh, to teach him step by step. You start with the front legs and put them on the first step. Make him comfortable with the idea that two legs are on the step and then try to get the back legs on the step and uh, your greyhound kind of needs to move along uh, to um, it make space for his long body. If your greyhound um, doesn't move along just uh, naturally when uh, you put the front legs on the stairs, just try to move the uh, front legs further up on the stairs, then lift up the back legs, put them on the other stairs and guide the greyhound along to go up the stairs. Now downstairs should be a bit easier, especially with this wide set of stairs, but the same idea applies here. When we have trained our grand on the wide uh, set of stairs, we are giving him a new challenge and introducing them to our narrow set of stairs that are leading up to the um, old Bedford bus that we have uh, renovated uh, as a lounge space for our volunteers at Tipara Nui. This is a very desirable space for the grands to go in because they can smooch out, uh, hang out on the couch, smooch with the volunteers in front of the fireplace there. But these um, flight uh, sets of um, stairs are very daunting to grounds when they're new. So here we have to... Um, the tuck method doesn't work, so you have to make sure the greyhound gets the idea by lifting the front poles on the step, as shown in the previous video, and then guiding the greyhound up and down the stairs step by step. Now try that a couple of times, give him a rest, try it again. Obviously you can always use treats. Um, we don't use treats to train uh, the greyhounds on stairs because the greyhounds are not used to get treats um, outside of their kennel and they find that quite confusing. A next level to teach a greyhound to master the stairs is uh, a stairs like this, a long flight of uh, steps where it is uh, wide at the beginning uh, but open thread and then uh, narrow uh, and through a gate um, through halfway through. Um, this is 
quite advanced um, mastering the stairs. So if this uh, is the sort of stairs that you have at home, be aware that your newly retired greyhound will struggle to go up the stairs. It needs to be confident. Um, the best idea here is also to use the front paws, put them up the stairs and then lift the greyhound at the bottom up with their back legs and move them slightly forward so they get the idea to move their legs forward up and down the stairs. Don't use a tuck method in this. This is too steep and too daunting for a greyhound. Um, this would not work. The ground would only freeze. So a push at the bottom to get him out of balance and make him move in the right desired direction is all that needs. If nothing works and you want to get your greyhound finally home, this is the ultimate method you can always uh, apply. Just lift up your greyhound um, just like this and carry him uh, up the stairs. The greyhound will love it to be lifted up like this because that's what it, he's used to, he or she is used to throughout his racing career. So good luck with your training. And now we're going to have a look at a little footage of Rocket. Uh, Rocket is our featured foster at the Paranui and she's been here for about two weeks now and uh, she has actually naturally mastered the stairs to the bus. Wow! <laughs> Rocket, you rock! <laughs> yes. I'm here today with Rocket. Um, her, um, her name is Rocky Top and uh, she's four years old. And uh, Rocket is, she's a very small dog, but she has a lot of energy. Um, she's very gentle, and, but she's really curious and very active, loves playing and will be um, very affectionate, um, playful at the same time. I spent the last few days with Rocket and we had a little play in the garden, we had a run in the paddock and yeah, she has a lot of energy, good energy. She gets tired in, during the day with all the energy that she likes to use, uh, so she sleeps like a baby at night. Uh, she knows how to relax, but um, you need to be patient for her for sure. Rocket, uh, <laughs> yes, she loves playing, she loves running. Um, and she's, uh, she will be very affectionate when you try to clean her and uh, she will like to play with you all the time. Uh, she just gets excited about everything, even if it's just a little pee break. <laughs> she will actually jump with excitement when she has had her pee. Um, so she will make some people very, very happy and bring a lot of joy to the family. Little darling, it's been a long, long racing season. Little darling, it's time to rest and find a home. Here comes the hounds, didn't you know? Here comes the hounds, and I say it's for life. Hounds for life. Hounds for life. to the end of the show and we have to say goodbye for now so thank you so much for watching subscribing and liking the show commenting and spreading the greyhound love all over the world until we see you again bye, bye.
title of this show? <laughs> Edith and... Alex? No. Edith and... Uh, Grant's living in small spaces. Let me just... It's so, it's so silly. What is it? Uh, what